it's been kind of a crazy week. Maybe mag, mag you know what magnanimous might be that you know, I did take full credit for the pump this week in in Bitcoin because you know I, I pulled out the green pants last week and we, we kind of predicted that it'd be a pretty good week, which it it has. It is all about the having, right? It's you know we had the demand shock, price went up. Now we got the supply shock coming. And the supply shock, it's actually big. Because I think, I don't know if you guys put out the data, somebody put out the data, um, 69%, <laughs> maybe it was a lie, 69% uh, of, of BTC hasn't uh, moved in the last 12 months. It's been all out euphoria for cryptocurrency investors over the past week. A few days ago, the fear and greed index for Bitcoin hit 79 out of 100 its highest score since the leading crypto asset hit an all-time high of $69,000 in November 2021. The index, which aggregates data on momentum, volatility, and volume, and has always been a good measure of market sentiment, is now moving between greed and extreme greed. The increasing optimism among cryptocurrency investors can be attributed to the immense success of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. According to recent reports, the ETFs have significantly increased their Bitcoin holdings. Since they started trading on January 11th, the nine newborn ETFs have collectively amassed about 264,232.74 Bitcoin, with a current market value of over $13.5 billion. BlackRock's iBit leads the pack with about 43.89% share of the total loot. According to the report, BlackRock now holds over 115,989 Bitcoin. Fidelity follows closely with over 83,928 Bitcoin, about 31.76% of the total haul owned by the nine ETFs. Both firms currently hold $5.95 billion and $4.3 billion worth of Bitcoin, respectively. ARK Invest and Bitwise come third and fourth with 26,640 and 22,518 Bitcoin worth $1.3 billion and $1.1 billion as of February 17th. The Invesco Galaxy Fund also holds 6,059 Bitcoin, while Vanek and Valkyrie hold 3,620 Bitcoin and 3,083.25 Bitcoin, respectively. Franklin Templeton and Wisdom Tree come last with 1,885 and 509 Bitcoin, respectively. While these nine ETFs have amassed more than 264,000 Bitcoin in the past five weeks since launch, GBTC has reduced its holdings by about 161,046.16 Bitcoin since its sell-off started on January 12th, 2024. Altogether, the ETFs have also recorded over $11 billion in inflows, signifying how successful the whole venture has been. According to renowned hedge fund manager and Bitcoin investor Mark Yusko, things are about to get even more exciting for Bitcoin investors. In the coming weeks leading up to the 2024 halving, Yusko is predicting further significant price gains for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. As we bring you clips from Yusko's latest weekly roundup with Blockworks Macro, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks, and enjoy the video. We had, a, we had an aggregate demand shift. That's only going to accelerate, right? The, the increasing demand for ETFs is, is it's not going to be linear. It's, it's going to be exponential. Now, it'll take a while to get to the knee of the curve, but, you know, people like Vanguard and uh, uh, UBS and Merrill Lynch eventually drop their prohibitions against the ETFs, more capital will flow. But even, even without, even with the largest firms still adamantly against, you've seen individuals and institutions, a big chunk of, of the BlackRock capital is coming from big places, you know, sovereign wealth funds, pension funds. Um, so that, that demand shock isn't going away. And there's 900 BTC a day produced today on April 8th. I think it's interesting that now the estimates are that the, the halvings are going to occur on the same day as the lunar or the solar eclipse, which is kind of wild. You know, when it was going to be 420, everyone was all excited. And I think it's going to be 48. <laughs> now it looks like uh, 
the number, but we, you know, we don't know for, for certain, but uh, if it does coincide with the, the solar eclipse, I think that that's kind of wild. Um, but that demand is, is challenged because this huge amount of coins, you, know, you got, you got a million from Satoshi, whoever, and then you got, Estimates somewhere between three and a half and five million coins that are lost or stolen, you know, multi-sig that are stranded, whatever. And then you got 10 million held by individuals, most of them hodlers who have said, you know, can pry it for my cold dead fingers. Uh, the supply shock, though, we go from 900 to 450 a day. That's a big deal if that hodler group or hodler group, however you want to pronounce it, um, won't give up their coins and there's less coins for the miners to sell. The other problem is the miners haven't been selling all of their coins. Some of them have, but but some of them have been hoarding a little bit. So the supply problem is is real and it's only going to get more acute. With the rousing success of the spot Bitcoin ETFs, altcoin investors are on the lookout for the next big thing. For many prominent cryptocurrency investors, especially Real Vision CEO Raul Pal, the next big thing will be the Ethereum ETFs. Pal is convinced that the SEC will be forced to approve the spot Ethereum ETF applications before it, just like it did with the Bitcoin ETFs. As SEC Chair Gary Gensler has explained in several interviews, the courts forced the regulator to approve the spot Bitcoin ETFs. The judge in Grayscale's case against the SEC argued that the agency had no cause to deny spot Bitcoin ETFs on the basis of possible market manipulation when it had already approved Bitcoin futures ETFs that could just as easily be manipulated. During his interview, Yusko argued that it is logical for the regulator to approve Ethereum-based spot ETFs. However, he is certain that Gensler will not approve any of the applications, including those from BlackRock and Fidelity. Let's get back to the interview. <laughs> well, there's the logic. And then there's the emotion. So the logic would say, hey, SEC, you ruled multiple times that Bitcoin and ETH were not securities. Therefore, if you approve the Bitcoin ETF, ipso facto or, you know, ceteris paribus, you should, you know, approve the ETH ETF. That said, I watched, you know, GG on the 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 tube the other day. And I would say logic has nothing to do with this. He was all emotion. It's tougher to tell because all things are not equal. You know, so one of the things that, that always happens in this part of the cycle. So we're, you know, we're in the, the late stages of, you know, crypto summer. So, you know, June, we, we swap over into crypto fall and get the parabolic part. In that, that late stages, you, you see this kind of price action where Bitcoin becomes the lead because people are anticipating the halving. And then the others, particularly ETH, they tend to move in lockstep, like at a ratio. You know, at one point it was like 10 to one or eight to one. And, and, and they just, they literally just move in lockstep. And then it, filters down into the other coins too. And some of them actually then get on people's radar and then they actually have their little little spiky moves. Um, and you saw that with with Doge and Shiba in, in the last cycle, not so much this cycle, but at least people aren't talking about them as much. I don't see that that silly little dog all the time. Um, but I think this time it's it's frogs and uh and and other things. I think in Bitcoin's case, and I I haven't proven this in the sense of going to the to the wallets, but I, uh, I I shouldn't say I've seen the wallets that were accumulating Bitcoin in advance of the Bitcoin ETF approval. I will argue those were related to BlackRock at all that they were basically accumulating some that they could then go buy from um, and make a little profit too. Um, and maybe it was friends of the firm. Maybe it was hedge funds that they work with. Maybe it was, you know, I, again, I, I haven't done the forensics to find out who, but my guess is that was pretty, I mean, you saw it every day. And that was front running of 
a different kind. Like normally front running is, hey, I just want to get in because I know something's going to happen, like an earnings announcement, like like Coinbase, which we'll talk about. So there was a lot of front running going on because there were people who were pretty sure this was going to be a blow up number. And you saw it was going up every day into the earnings and then ended up even more after the earnings. But that's a different kind of front running than this. This, I believe, was getting supply because when the demand for the ETFs came in, I think people knew it was going to be hard to go find enough Bitcoin to buy. And so that's the, and that could be what's happening with ETH. So if people were doing the same kind of thing, then you'd have upward pressure and you've seen ETH actually outperforming modestly. I mean, it's been pretty neck and neck, but outperforming modestly in the last few weeks. I probably lean that unlike the Bitcoin ETF where you had pretty clear signaling by the the sponsors that yeah we're we're good and you know the relentless meetings back and forth i don't hear about lots of meetings and lawyers you know billing doing lots of billable hours on on eth SEC Chair Gary Gensler seems dead set against the approval of the several spot ethereum etf applications before him while prominent investors like Larry Fink and Kathy Wood strongly believe the regulator will approve spot Ethereum ETFs, Gensler continues to maintain that the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs does not guarantee the same for other cryptocurrencies. During a recent interview with CBNC, the SEC chair clarified that the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs does not mean the regulatory agency supports Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Gensler added that the SEC will not cherry pick any cryptocurrency and its decisions will be based on stipulated rules and regulations. However, the market continues to be optimistic about an impending approval for ETH ETFs. Analysts from Grayscale, Bitwise and Galaxy Digital say there is a 75% chance of approval by year end. According to Bloomberg analyst James Safart, the SEC's delay on Invesco US and Galaxy Ethereum ETF suggests more delays are likely in the coming months. The only date that matters for spot Ethereum ETFs at this time is May 23rd, the analyst noted in a recent tweet. That is Vanek's final deadline date. Do you think the SEC will be forced to approve Ethereum ETFs in May, just like it did for the spot Bitcoin ETFs? How do you think that will impact prices as we go further into the bull market? Please drop your replies, as well as your comments on Mark Yusko's interview, in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.